This is an Acer laptop. It's an Acer Aspire E1 570. And it's been given to me to restore or repair. And my plan is to just give this away. This is an i3 system that has a third generation 3217U. It's got a random six gigabytes of DDR3 memory, 15.6 inch LCD screen, DVD, super multi drive, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, battery, and it doesn't have a drive in it, so we need to put another drive in this system. It does come with the power supply, I have plugged that in, so let's switch this on. I've got a little, couple of lights down here, no bootable device. That's as we expected because there's no drive in here. So let's put a drive in here and see if it works. So I'll switch it off. Flip it over. And we've got a battery at the bottom. We can see the heat pipe for the processor there. And we've got this section here which opens up and we've got the memory and the drive bay so that's good so often laptops end up with this missing people take this out and then don't leave the drive uh, bay or container so it's good to see that still there so the first thing I'm gonna do is put in a drive that already has windows on it so that I can boot into that and check the system out to see if it works properly without having to go through the whole install process only to find that there's some kind of problem. So I'm gonna put this drive in with Windows 10 on and we'll put this back on and see if it boots up. Gonna press the power button now. No bootable device. That's not what I want to see. Hmm. I've taken the drive out, put it back in, used the caddy this time. I've taken the battery out of the back of the laptop. We're still getting no bootable device. So let's see if we can go into the BIOS. And we're getting asked for a password. I don't know the password of the system. So let's see if there's a way of clearing the BIOS password. Okay, so I have found on YouTube a guide by Mike's Unboxing Reviews where you press enter three times and you get the option to enter an unlock password and this then gives you a code for this key if you go to biosbug.com as shown by Mike's Unboxing. So thanks very much to Mike's Unboxing YouTube channel. I'll go do that now and hopefully get a key to unlock this. So biosbug.com has given me a code. We're going to try that now and see if that works. And we've unlocked the BIOS. That is really helpful. Um, I didn't have to take the laptop apart. I just had to put a code into a website. Um, hopefully we can switch off this uh, password requirement. Um, And again, maybe you have to enter the supervisor password. Um, right, boot mode, UEFI. Okay. Guess we don't need that right now, but we've got all of these different boot options. We've got six gigabytes of RAM. Let's enable the boot menu. And 
yes, exit, saving changes, no bootable device. So let's go into the BIOS again. And it asks for the password again. That is quite frustrating. So we can unlock it, but we have to do this again. Hopefully it's just the same. Oh no, it's generated a different key. So we then need a different code to get into the bus. I'm going to see if I can clear the password. Okay, I went into the BIOS again using the code and the supervisor password is set, but I set the drive to legacy and IDE mode and now it's booting from the drive. So if we're able to boot from the drive without having to put in a password, that would be a way of getting this laptop up and running. We'll have to see what happens when we restart, whether it's going to ask for the password again. So I'm just going to restart and see what happens when we do this restart. Okay, it looks like it's booting into Windows. That's a good sign. And it's continuing to boot. And we'll just have a look and see what the performance is like in terms of temperatures and whether it overheats or anything like that when we put the processor under load. So it looks like it's a dual core processor with four threads. And as said before, it's a 3217U, it's a 17 watt CPU. Um, we've got an Ivy bridge, DDR3 running in dual channel, even though one of these is two gigabyte stick and one of them is a four gigabyte stick. It's using the Intel HD graphics 4000 and let's run a bench here and it's getting a score of 430 ish, it's slowing down a little bit. Let's see if we can compare that to see what that is most equivalent to. So if we go for a Core 2 Duo E8500, it's a little bit slower than that. Let's just run another bench. So it is getting up to about 440. But still, that is slower than a Core 2 Duo E8500. Probably uses a lot less power though, in comparison. So I'm going to stop this and run the stress and leave that running to see what sort of temperature this processor gets, whether it overheats or anything like that, and whether the fans can keep it cool enough. So I've checked and the Wi-Fi connection is working. It's detecting the Wi-Fi. The drive is connected in SATA 600, SATA 3. And I'll just run a quick speed test to see what kind of performance we're getting with the SSD drive. The battery has a manufactured date of 2013. So that is about 12 years old. It's also quite a small battery, so I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we will check that out as well. I also need to check whether the keyboard works because I haven't checked that yet. And we need to know that every single key on the keyboard works. Otherwise, it's not going to be much use for someone who wants to do typing and things like that. So the read write speeds aren't particularly impressive, but maybe it's the drive. I don't know. They're not great really, but not much I can do about that. It looks like all of the keys work. So I'll check the drive as well, see if this drive works. Okay, I've tried two DVDs, uh, a video DVD and a game and it looks like the DVD drive isn't working which is a real shame because it's useful having a DVD drive for when the internet goes down and things like that. So 
I guess that's one problem with this laptop so far. The DVD drive does not work. I've been running CPU Z at the using the stress. So it's been running at 100% um, for a while now. And the temperature maximum is 69 degrees C. And then it's, you know, dropped a little bit. So it looks like the fan is doing a perfectly good job of keeping this processor cool. I mean, it is only 1.8 gigahertz, so, and it's only 17 watts max, so it's not massively hot, but it's good to see that it's keeping it cool. So let's um, shut this down, restart it, and see if it powers up without me having to go into the BIOS. So I'm going to switch it back on now. Okay, we're going into Windows. I'm going to pull the power out. I mean, you shouldn't do this when it's still booting up. Um, so I've pulled the power out. The battery seems to be working, which is kind of surprising. Um, let's have a look what the battery says down here. 47% available. I mean, that's impressive considering the battery is from 2013 and is 12 years old and the battery still works. That's surprising. I'm going to shut this down again, pull the power out, pull the battery out and see if it will still work when I plug the power back in. So it's shut down, pulling the power out. This computer behind is making noise. Um, and I'm going to pull this battery out using this release. And then we'll plug the power back in. And then press the power button. And it's booting into Windows again. So I think once it's registered that there's a drive in there, it seems to be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a drive. I've got a choice of four. These are all from CEX in the UK. They were five pounds each. They're all 120 gigabytes. I'm going to just put in a, sorry about the noise. Just going to put in one of these Kingston drives. Um, that should do the job. This should be fine for something like Windows 10. And we should be up and running fairly quickly once this is installed. So this shouldn't take too long. Should be able to find um it kind of holds it in with this little um clip so let's put that on there to help keep it in place whoops on the other side. That's lined up correctly. Although I've put it in upside down, I think. Okay, this is going in. It should be a blank drive should slide in and I can put the screw back in there. Okay, it's detected the Windows 10 USB because there's no operating system on the SSD. So I'll just quickly go through the install process and we should be able to get Windows 10 on this SSD quite quickly. Okay, we should be able to install this here. 
And away we go. We're in Windows 10. Let's check device manager and see what the driver situation is. The display looks quite nice. Um, even though it's got the basic display adapter. So I'll connect to the Wi-Fi, update drivers and test the system some more and see how it is. See if there's any obvious problems other than the DVD drive not working properly. I think once we've got the drivers installed and a few little bits of software installed on this, this should be a reasonable machine for perhaps going on the internet and a bit of office use, web browsing, that kind of thing. It's not going to be the fastest system, but it should be reasonable for light use. This laptop would have originally been made for Windows 8, but it seems to cope reasonably well with Windows 10. But what would you do with this laptop? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.